want to talk about a fact that I've seen in my 28 years as a realtor that most realtors out there are half-hearted part-timers that basically sell a handful of houses a year. We can do a lot better than that. The way you do that, I'm going to give you a six-step outline to follow. If you go through these six steps and you take each one of them seriously, we can do a lot better <laughs> than the half-hearted part-timers selling a handful of houses a year. So step number one of the six is commit to self-mastery. You hear me talk about it all the time. It's one of my favorite topics, personal development. That's what self-mastery is. It's not just getting better at the semantics and logistics of real estate and systems, but it's mastering yourself, your mindset, your habits, your daily routine. See, committing to self-mastery is a process. It's not an event. It's not something that's going to happen one day and we wake up and say, wow, I'm there. <laughs> I got what I wanted. It's like, no, this is something that is a lifelong path. It's a learning what other people do. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Learning how to be successful in our chosen industry and then working on ourselves to be that kind of person. We talked about this the other day, but it's worth repeating, which is your philosophy, how you think is what starts everything. If we change how we think, everything will change for us, right? I love that line. Philosophy is where you start thinking. It's like, okay, what are my philosophy? How do I feel about stuff? What do I know? Then what are my thoughts? What do I think about that? That generates feelings and feelings typically generate actions and then your actions generate your results. But it all starts with your philosophy. I used this example the other day, but think about the real estate landscape out there. The real estate market is the ocean. And the realtors are boats. Every single realtor out there, think about it, there's a million and a half members of NAR. There's a million and a half little boats out in the ocean, and they're all trying to get to the success island, right? They're trying to find some way to build a business that's profitable for them in their own style. Well, the ocean is the same for everybody. We're all in real estate. Then what affects the boats is the wind, and the wind blows on all of us, and the wind is the market. It's interest rates, it's inventory, how many homes are for sale, how many buyers are looking to buy, what's affordability like right now, what's the economy. The thing about the wind is it blows on all of us. The wind blows on every single one of those boats. But some boats are going to make it where they want to go. Others are going to crash against the rocks and not end up where they want. What's the difference? The difference is your ability to set a better sail. And the set of the sail on a sailboat is like your personal philosophy. The biggest factor in your success is going to be your philosophy. If you think you know everything already, good luck. If you think, well, Rick, I'm just not smart enough, or I haven't been in it long enough, or I'm too young, or I'm not experienced enough, those are all parts of your philosophy. We have to attack and understand our belief systems, attack the ones that don't serve us. But committing to self-mastery means getting better. Study the market. Study the specific niche you want to be involved in in real estate and get really good at it. If you commit to self-mastery, not just dabble in it, but commit to self-mastery and live your life like I'm going to be getting better all the time and I'm going to be learning from those people around me who are already really good at it, you're going to succeed. You're going to find your way to the success. You're not going to end up on the rocks. But if you think you know everything already, or you're not willing to learn, then the wind is going to take you wherever the wind blows. And we all know the wind blows sometimes places we don't want to go. So number one, the first step of the six is commit to self-mastery. Step number two is focus on what you want. I'm always telling people to decide exactly what it is you want to accomplish. You get to pick the time frame. What do you want for your life? <laughs> that would be a big time frame. What do you want for this year? That's still too long for me. What do you want for this quarter, this three-month period of time, I like what do you want for this month, that'd be great, a monthly idea, a very clear goal, a very clear objective for the month. I even like weeks or days. You get to pick the time frame though. I, if it was me, I would pick a week or I would pick a month. That's how I do things. I pick weekly goals and I pick monthly time frames. Any longer than that, and I get distracted. I can't hold that same motivation. I can't hold that same passion. And the only way we're going to beat all those part-timers that are half-hearted out there selling a half dozen houses a year is by being better, by working harder, by working on ourselves and doing things in a different way. And it starts with your philosophy, but the second thing is deciding. So number two is decide exactly what you want. What is it you're trying to accomplish specifically? Don't be a general, you know, what they call a wandering generality. Be a focus specific. Focus specifics get things done. 
wandering generalities kind of bounce around from here to there. And there's a lot of realtors that fit that description. They're wandering generalities. The only way we're really going to build a successful, profitable business that's consistent over time is to be very focused and very specific about what we're trying to accomplish. So that's the second one. The third step is discover your options. How could you do this? You're not the first one that's gotten into real estate. Others have gone before us. What have they done? What are some ways I could build this business? I've taught this before. Refresh yourself on our video if you haven't seen it yet on the networker, marketer, prospector, and converter graph, but find out what is your style? What is your best way to do business? And then think, okay, who is doing it that way that's really successful in my market? There is somebody in your market that is very successful in the style you would like to emulate. So start discovering your options of what they're doing. What are other people doing that are working that I could borrow and then implement my take on it and find out, okay, this is what needs to be done. Then I'm going to go out there and make sure I do it at a higher level, or I'm going to work even harder at it than that person. But find out what others are doing. We're not the first one to try this. Number four is model. After you've discovered your options and you understand, okay, there are some people in my market successfully building a real estate business with this style. What are my options going to be? What am I going to do specifically? I need to model their behavior. I need to understand what their systems are. I need to understand what their processes are, what their daily routines look like. Take them to lunch. Talk to people. If you can't take them to lunch and talk to them, then study and understand what they're doing and look at it and model other successful people. So determine what your options are, then find somebody that's doing it that way and model them. And if you can't get physically around people, watch YouTube videos. There's thousands. You know, come to our calls on the first and third Tuesday of the month. We talk about what successful people do in real estate and just model that. That will take you to the highest level and pick something, by the way, that you enjoy. That's the great thing about real estate is you can do it any way you want. Everything in real estate actually works if you're good at it. If you're not very good at it, then nothing really works. So find people that are doing what you like to do and then model that behavior. That's the fourth one. So number five is implement systems. Modeling behavior is going to entail implementing systems. You think about different coaching companies that talk about systems. Buffini talks about referrals. Proctor talks about direct mail. Star Power talks about marketing, right? There's a lot of different types. Ferry talks about cold calling. You know, I grew up listening to a lot of Star Power and, and Mike Ferry as well. But my style is thinking. If I was going to say, well, what's Rick Gray's style? If Buffini is by referral only and Proctor is direct mail and Ferry is cold calling and Star Power is marketing, what's Rick Gray? Rick Gray is thinking and then figuring out which one applies to you. Because some people hate to cold call. So why would you go to a Mike's Ferry system if you don't like cold calling? Other people don't like doing referrals. So why would you go to a Buffini system? My system is this. Hey, let's take pieces from things that actually work from a lot of different styles and then apply it to ourselves based on what our values are and what we like to do. So my system would be strategically thinking and applying things that work. So that's going to be a really big success is implementing systems. What are you doing? If you're a referral person, what are you doing to get referrals? What's your system? If you said, no, Rick, I'm a cold caller. So who are you calling? Do you have a dialer? Do you have you know, a headset? Who are you calling? Do you have set hours on a daily basis where you call people? I mean, what is your exact system within your category or categories? I wouldn't have more than about three, three to five pillars for your lead generation of real estate, but they need to represent you and they need to be something you're willing to work hard on. If you do that and then you have a system in that category, work the system, right? You've got to do that. And the last one, number six, is accountability. You have to be accountable for actually doing things. I love holding people accountable to activities rather than results. Don't hold people accountable to results, even yourself. Hold yourself accountable to activities. What are you doing? In the four disciplines of execution, they call that a huddle, right? They call that a 15-minute huddle, which is, this is what I committed to doing last week. This is what I did last week. This is what I'm committing to doing this week, right? Three parts. What I committed to last time, what I actually did, what I'm committing to this time. So if we had that on a weekly basis, you could even do it every day. I used to do it every single day with my real estate teams, but you could do it on a weekly basis with yourself. I call it a weekly strategy session. Sometime at the beginning of the week, you should put it in your calendar. It should be time blocked, right? Something you do every week at that time. And you think, what am I going to do this week to generate new business? And what am I going to do this week to add value to my past clients? Make sure you answer those two questions. Then when you think about it, it's like, okay, hold myself accountable to activities. How many calls am I going to make? 
When I was actively doing a lot of listings in my real estate career, I was making 50 contacts basically every week. That's 200 a month. Having 200 real estate related conversations a month, that's 50 a week. That's not impossible. That's 10 a day, five days a week. You can do that. But whatever number you pick and whatever activity you pick, track it somehow. Right? You can use Tally, it's a great app. I use paper, I'm kind of an old fashioned, I like the paper and, and journal system, but track how many conversations or whatever activity it is, but you have to have some accountability. Have a coach, have an accountability partner, have somebody that's going to keep you on track. If you're left to your own devices, like a lot of us, when it comes to working out or eating properly or lead generating for real estate, if we're left to our own devices, sometimes we're not very consistent. We go through stages. And I've said this before, consistency beats intensity every time. People that say, Rick, I haven't lead generated in a month, but this week I'm really gonna hit it hard. They can go really intensely for two or three weeks, then do nothing for a month. That person will lose to the person that just does a little bit every day, but they do it every day over a long period of time. Consistency beats intensity. So those are your six steps. Let's make sure we get those down, understand you're in control of this and you can build a really successful real estate business if we're not just half-hearted dabbling part-time like most people. If we take it seriously, set up a schedule, implement some systems, learn and model from others, and then hold ourselves accountable to activities. I look forward to your results. Tell me in the, in the comments below, what do you do activity-wise that keeps you in the game, in the mind game of lead genning? And then how do you set up your schedule? Do you have a great morning routine? Do you use your calendar? or do you just kind of wing it? I'd love to hear your results.